slip capital femoral epiphysis is the topic. And basically what this is, is it involves the femur, and I'll draw a diagram here to illustrate what's happening. And this of course is the hip bone. And coming out of the hip bone or attached to it is the femur. And this is of course the femoral head. And right below it is the growth plate, this part here. And then, of course, you've got the actual femur itself, which is the big bone. Now, what slipped capital femoral epiphysis is, is the movement of this femoral neck upward and forward. So you're going upward in this direction, and then forward. And then forward, of course, I can't really illustrate, but you can kind of look at it as coming towards you on the page or on the screen. So it's basically a, a displacement. And the reason this happens is because uh, during adolescence, during this rapid phase of growth, there's a series of events that can happen and that can lead to this. And there's four different uh, reasons. The first one is obesity. Obesity can cause a tremendous amount of force uh, on this uh, femoral um, uh, area of the bone of the skeleton. And then the second reason is trauma. Trauma can also occur. Uh, hormonal changes are a definite a part of uh, the risk factors or causes involved. And another one that can happen is inflammation. Inflammation can also lead to this. Uh, it happens mostly in early adolescence and it affects boys a lot more than girls and basically they they feel that the weakening of this growth plate which is right here I'll color it, color it in in red is really at the heart of why this uh, femoral bone and femur uh, displaces upward and then forward so what are the symptoms though why is this happening well, the symptoms um, kind of happen in a progression. The very first thing that can happen is the hip can be very stiff. And they feel that that's sort of the initial presenting uh, um, symptom. The next thing that can happen is the boy can start walking with a limp. Third is hip pain. And then eventually this can progress to hip pain that radiates uh, down to the knee. And it may even present as knee pain, actually. Um, another thing that definitely happens with uh, slipped capital femoral epiphysis is that there's very limited flexion and abduction of the leg and the hip. So all this is uh, presenting in uh, this uh, disorder. The affected hip is also going to be very limited in its flexion and abduction and rotation as well. So these are important uh, symptoms to keep in mind. Diagnosis. A diagnosis is basically easily done with some x-rays and then um, you will see on the x-rays that uh, the femur is indeed uh, displaced upward and forward and the femoral head will actually be posterior and inferior. So the treatment basically involves surgery, surgical repair, and involves screw fixation. Um, basically, you have to bolt the, the, the femur in um, so that it doesn't get displaced. But there's one very important aspect, is that you have to prevent further injury. So you have to make sure that there is no weight bearing. So the, the boy cannot put pressure on it, put weight on it. So that is done by giving the, the boy crutches. And this is important because if the child bears weight, or the adolescent uh, boy bears weight, it can lead to potentially osteonecrosis, which is a pretty serious uh, complication. So we have to make sure that there's no weight bearing before, as soon as possible, and then of course surgery to uh, repair. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes. 13-year-old boy is seen for right knee pain that has persisted for the past two months despite the use of over-the-counter analgesics 
His mother states that he has been limping since he started to have the pain. Pain is of insidious onset, but its intensity sometimes subtly increases. Physical exam, the boy is obese. His weight is higher than 90th percentile. Flexion of the right hip causes marked outward rotation and reproduces the pain. Internal rotation of the hip is limited, and the right leg is slightly shortened compared to the left leg, which of the following is most likely diagnosis. Well, they have everything in here. They have uh, a boy who's uh, in early adolescence, presenting with knee pain. He's got the limp, he's obese, and he's got uh, difficulty with um, flexion and uh, rotation as well. And this is all classic for slipped capital femoral epiphysis. 12-year-old boy with asthma is brought to the emergency department by his mother because of intermittent right hip pain for the last two weeks. Pain is non-radiating and worse with activity. It has now become more constant, worse with weight-bearing, and over-the-counter analgesics only, only give minimal relief. No history of night pain denies any recent trauma, weight change, or constitutional symptoms. He tells you that he went to the pediatrician's office 10 days ago for the same hip pain, and he was told that this physical exam, lab studies, uh, were unremarkable. Pediatrician's diagnosis was a pulled muscle or tendon in the right hip region, and he was advised to rest. Now in the hospital, his physical exam shows an obese patient, limping gait, leg length discrepancy of 0.5 centimeters, intact motor sensory exam of lower extremities bilateral. Uh, the right hip region has intact skin, no focal tenderness to palpation, passive range of motion of the right hip is decreased on internal rotation. When the hip is flexed, the thigh externally rotates. The most appropriate next step in management is to. Uh, this is a very nice, rather long, but very nice presentation of slip capital femoral epiphysis. And um, the treatment for this essentially involves non-weight bearing and then surgical treatment by putting in screws. So let's see which one that would be. Uh, the first one talks about antibiotics, and that's not really part of it. Crutch walking, non-weight bearing, and pelvic x-rays. Well, that sounds right, but let's see. Repeat uh, CBC, that's not really the right one. And the, send them home with a prescription for a shoe insert. <laughs> that's not correct. So uh, basically, choice B, and then of course to make it complete, if the pelvic x-rays did indeed show the classic... Uh, uh, displacement of the femur, then of course you would do a surgical uh, repair with um, screw fixation.